can go. Hey, hey, everybody. I'm so glad you guys are here. I don't even know how many's in the chat. But anyway, the, 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 we should have had the pre-party because Mouse and I were having a great conversation. And hopefully we'll keep it going in this chat with y'all. And I see people have been here a while. I think Jamie's here. Sorry, Teresa's at the doctor's office. Well, I hope you get back soon. We get Dink and Tank, and we got Sarah from Homesteading Hustle, and we got Scott waving from Ramble with the Brooms, <laughs> and we got Christine, Mrs. Gilliam Farms, and Sarah from Waiting and Watching, and we got Bonnie. Hoping you're having a great day. And we, oh, Tammy is, or Jamie is here. And then we got Tammy. So hopefully you can all hear us. So give us a thumbs up. You can hear us and see us. Because that's always something that might happen on my lives. Right. First yeah. time I had mouse toes on my live. I think it took us 15 minutes just to get started. It was 22. Yeah, 22 minutes. Mm -hmm. 24. Yeah, I didn't even want to go look back and look. I know, but you figured it out. And we have two issues. One, I'm on DSL right on the edge of the continent. It is what it is. We worked it out. We didn't even have a bad attitude about it. So Nope. And people were impressed with that. Yes, we didn't give up and neither did the side chatter. So. And I'll never forget your face when I said, this is only my third live. She's like, I was what? like, whoa. Yeah. And I was real hazy then. My DSL has improved, but it's still DSL. But this is what I always say. I could go back to the big city of Greenville, right, or Columbia, South Carolina, and I could have that high-speed charter internet, and my picture would just be flawless. But I would not have a tidal creek where I got fish and blue crabs and mm -hmm. a kayak, and I can go out and do my old lady thing. So if it means I have slower connection and it's a nightmare to upload videos, then I'm going to take retirement on the coast over that, you know? And we got Bonnie saying, mouse toes always makes me smile. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and we got Thank Renee you. saying hello. And what do I comment on your videos? I think I say, thanks for being the sunshine in my day. Didn't I always say that in your com in your comment section? Right. No. Don't I say that in your comment well, section? Listen, yes, life is short. I'm happy, right? I mean, it's 110 heat index out here, 97 degrees, 85% humidity, right? I, I've, I'm sweating like a, let's just say a frisky girl up in Chuich. I got a fan paint pointed at me, right? But I'm still going to do what I need to do, even though I'm sweaty. This gets on my nerves taking two showers a day, right? <laughs> because, and then always having to wash my towel because it never really dries by the next time you need it. But you're happy. I work at being happy. Um, I still work at gardening, even though it's hot. I still do canning and food preservation. We just do it a little different when the weather's bad. When, when you said humidity and gardening, I thought of my husband yesterday. He was covered in sweat all yes. over his body yesterday when we were trying to garden. I finally purchased some of those quick dry shirts. Most of them, you know, even two years ago were too thin and they were a true t-shirt instead of a v-neck. And that way they don't, you know, literally I've thought I'm going to have to cut this t-shirt off of myself. I've had to get in the shower before in my t-shirt because it's so wet that you, you can't pull it off, you know, until you get in there. So I finally bought some of those shirts. I mean, they just dry faster. They smell worse. You don't get BO, but it smells like a dirty dog. You know, like if, if your dog went out in the rain and got wet, you didn't bathe him or rinse him off. Mm -hmm. But it's still better than the t-shirts where they're just stuck to you. So, but yeah, we keep, we just keep on keeping on. And we, it's what I tell people, like water comes in my yard, right? It's king tides or hurricane. Mm -hmm. So Vern is the master of our raised beds and replacing the soil and wheelbarrow. Now he hires a younger guy to help him on occasion. But if not, he would do it. I can't sling the dirt you know, in a shovel. 
So I have two acres, but I can't grow on all of it. And I've got to have a fence around it because of the, the deer, you know, which to me is just a meal on hooves, right? So that's why God made a crossbow. I'm nine feet up in the air. I can get a good bead on them when it's deer season and take them down. So, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, so I tell people garden where you are. That means your patio, okay, or your small area in a small neighborhood and can what you can. And if you can't grow food, you can't tell me there's not a farmer's market near you. Or a produce auction. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or during the grocery store, if you have to, you know, to buy it from, from there. Well, I think Linda's one of your biggest fans. Oh, and see, I used to live in the upstate in Greenville. Yep. And enjoyed it. I, I like South Carolina. I'm from Louisiana or Lousiana, as I call it. Mm -hmm. But... Um, the home office that Byrne worked for was based out of Greenville. So we lived there three different times. So to me, I guess South Carolina has become home. You know, I've lived in this state and others and other countries more than I have uh, lived in Louisiana. So a hey, Spartanburg. Yes. Yeah, Sparkleburg rivals with Greenville. Everybody makes fun of Spartanburg, but it's very nice. <laughs> so Go ahead. So I asked Mouse to come on because there's just, from when I look on social media, like Facebook and all those, there are so many new canner questions out there that need to be addressed. Like the misconception for new canners is they think they can take their recipe and put it into a jar. Oh, stop it. <laughs> yeah. Or your grandma's spaghetti sauce. I did that yep. the first year. I, I found one of my friends said, hey, my grandma's recipe. My husband loved when I canned it. Did I not know? No, I didn't know. So, yeah, we don't. It's, that's the hardest thing, isn't it? It's like I no longer can spaghetti meat sauce and I no longer can chili because you've got to get that 50% solid to that 50% liquid, and then to take it out, can't just heat it up in the microwave, say, okay? Mm -hmm. You have to cook it on the stove, you know, to evaporate some of that, but my gosh, that's tomato juice. So I don't want to waste it. So now I freeze those because sometimes they get a tin, T-I-N taste to me. And that's only as I was become older, but yeah, my daddy has a righteous spaghetti meat sauce but I can't can it. It's too dense. I mean, I could, if I want to kill us, make us sick, get a little brain damage. I'll pass on all that. So yeah. Yeah. I think it's very hard and people go, oh, but my grandma ate that for 40 years. Nothing's wrong with her. Nothing's wrong with her. And it's like, well, tomatoes were a little different there. You know, mm -hmm. they had more acid in them back then. Yeah. And I, I think a lot of people get caught up in the details. Like, I need to understand why I'm doing it. You ain't got to understand why you're doing it. Follow the book. Okay? The, the science is already done for you. The science is done with the engineering of the pressure canner. And if you want to get all deep up in it, okay, the front of your books, right, gives you detailed information on the science. Like if you ask me half the time, I can't tell you the temperature of water bath canning or pressure canning, but I don't I give two fat figs because I'm not going to water bath green beans. I'm going to pressure can green beans. So it, it, it just don't matter to me because the books say, take your pints, put it in your pressure canner, bin it for 10 minutes, and with pints process in 20 minutes. I also don't count on my memory, okay, for green I beans. I go I to a book and I look. Yeah. So I think you can be an expert on brain surgery, on how to do nails sanitarily. But if you don't get in there and paint somebody's nails or go into the OR, what is the use of that information? Right. You could be yeah, a brain yeah. surgeon, but you're not. How about you just get to get me? That's what I do. So water bath canning is a boiling is 212. You go pressure, ahead. pressure canning is 265. 
You go ahead. You get so, down with your knowledgeable self. So I, I'd rather use my pressure canner if it calls for a pressure canner. Yes. Yeah. I don't do love water bath, but I do it outside on my little, you know, camp chef explorer on legs. And mm -hmm. then all that steam stays out there because what you do not need when you're a Southern woman is more freaking humidity in your house for your air conditioner to have to deal with. So, but I love to can outside. Yep. See Jamie's country living gets out the book. The other thing I do, and y'all know this is I write down what's in that canner. I'm a hundred years old. How am I going to remember what's in there? What if I got green beans in one run, tomato sauce in the other run? Keep it simple, stupid. Green beans, 20 minutes because it's pints. The vent start time. What if your, your timer fails? I've had it happen. And then the process start time. It's right there. Okay. I'm only laughing because that's a great idea. Sometimes yep. I think, boy, I actually don't remember what's in the thing because I'm too busy doing other things. And then so you've got tomato sauce sitting there to go and chicken. And you got no idea what the heck is in your can or you're doing a can a day. Yeah. And that's the, like the precursor to the phone where you actually have an app that I have yet to download that app. But it sounds like an amazing idea. It's cute. But the issue with it is then you have to let me make sure it I'm you, sure have have to, you have to check off the things. I ain't got mm -hmm. time for that. But I mean, it's nice to still nice to have it. So why do things move all around on my desk? You have to have more than one timer. Yeah, the can I've timer. Had, I've yeah. had that problem where, you know. <laughs> yeah. So say that you click on vegetable, right? And then you say asparagus and it's going to be a pint. Of course, you're going to hot pack it. Are you going to do a dial gauge or a weighted gauge? What's your altitude? Okay. But then this is what it wants you to do. Click off, prepare jar, lids and rings. Hello. Can't see it. Okay. Two thirds water in the can. You have to click each of these dots. Yeah. I don't got time for that. Yeah. To get all the way down there. Hello. Legal pad, black marker. Okay, knuckle dragon. Ain't nobody, don't make stuff complicated, right? And I can yell to Vern when I hear a timer go off or he'll yell, sounds funny. And that's the other thing makes me mental. Leanne, what is this? It's a three-piece weight, but it's only for 10 pounds. Yeah, okay. But it's actually called, when it's in the books, three and it's giving you, Giving you the time for a dial gauge, is there a different time for this? And if so, what is this called? A weighted gauge. gauge. When people call this the jiggler, if you would see the emails I have gotten over the year, hey, I'm using my canner and the jiggler sounds funny. What do you think's wrong? <laughs> okay. Or... The hole that the hot air comes out of is not letting hot air come out of it. Would that be your vent pipe? So I'm scared to answer their question, right? And this does like a little hula dance, but it doesn't go wada, 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 right? So mm -hmm. yeah, those things make me crazy because people don't realize these books tell you the time, particularly this one right? We'll show you the time between your dial gauge and your weighted gauge, mm -hmm. which everybody's in the habit of calling it the jiggler. And it ain't a jiggler. It's a weighted gauge. So those, I just think every time I go to this, because I always use the weighted gauge. And remember in your canners, it comes with the regulator, which years ago I threw away. So yeah, I, I was going to use the weighted. When I first bought my first, pre well, my my Presto, I I'm really anal about you know Pacifics. So I yeah. thought if that needle was on 11 pounds per pressure, I was in the game. Yeah. So 2020 20 happened, and I needed to get my um, lid checked, right? Your pressure gauge, your dial gauge, pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I so I finally got it 
tested. Sorry. Here, my gauge was two pounds higher than what it was reading. Okay, at least it was higher. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Higher is better than lower, and then you'd have to look at all your your jarred food with the stink eye, right? Like, for, for at least for, for maybe at least six months before I got tested, I'm thinking, but, why do I have all this siphoning? Why does everything look like mush? Right. You know you can test your own gauge. I'll well, never yeah. make a video on how Vern does it, but you actually can do it yourself. I'm sure my husband can easily figure yeah, it out. Exactly. <laughs> yes. It's time. <laughs> Yes. Oh, right, right. But yeah, people go, could you have Vern make a video? Heck no, because if you do it wrong, you're going to blame me if you, if your mm -hmm. husband or you, or you blow up your own, um, what do you call it, thing full of air they use? It's an air compressor. Hello, hard words. Air yeah. Because so. they probably tested at the auto center. Yes, yes. Basically just measuring PSI. Oh, and if I watch one more video when they say, go to your local extension service, go to your local extension service with your dial gauge. And they go, yeah, we don't test those. They ain't tested those. I'm pretty sure in like 20 years, it's maybe more like five, but they will not test your gauge anymore. Well, I was very shocked that my local extension of a county of what, 4,000 people actually has yep. an extension office that does test it. Excellent. Okay. Emergency. Sirens. Alarms, row, row, row. Jamie's country living. Don't say anything, Leanne. Just said, which is better, weighted or a jiggler? Okay, mama. This, wait, I got to get on the stream yard side. The slang for this is a jiggler. In reality, it's a weighted gauge. So you're asking us, what is better, a weighted this or a jiggler this? Jamie. Hello? Uh huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yep. There's the importance of speak the accurate lingo, right? Because it's sort of the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. Yep. So the so difference is you would have a regulator, mm -hmm. right? The and nothing wrong with the regulator. When you have that, you just count on your dial gauge. And now I. It's the same way <laughs> it reads right. Yeah. My weighted gauge is the same as my dial gauge because Vern checks it every two months. <laughs> okay. So a lot of times people will tell you, don't count on your dial gauge if you're using your weighted gauge. Mm -hmm. Now, okay. Um, hello. If 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 it's right, it's right. Because this is going to, when it get and you're always adjusting it. But I say for new canners, Use the regulator and go by your dial gauge. There ain't no advantage to this, except I can walk into my laundry room, which is behind my old lady recliner, and hear this same rhythm. I don't ever go down the hall into the back of my house when I'm canning. But even Vern recognizes when the sound is wrong. You know, like when you're doing a long canning session, like quarts of meat or something, mm -hmm. you know, you just go, that that's not right. And it inched up, never goes lower, but it'll inch up. So, yeah, okay. So, sorry, that was my siren. I had no, to get my truck. No, it, it's something that seasoned canners and newbies need to know because, you know, it's like reading a recipe. You have to go look at it before you start it, no matter okay. how many you've been canning. Yeah, see, Heartland HQ with Dink and Tank is going to call it the hula dancer. So, imagine that email, Leanne. Hey, my hula dancer sounds funny, right? Like what? She got a butt cramp, a hip cramp, you know, her knee gone out. And we would have to figure, you would have to figure out that that is the dirt weighted gate, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. Jamie, I stay in the kitchen also. I'm just not comfortable. I can always be folding clothes, sitting on the sofa. But I am such an elderly woman that when I, we retired here at 55, we designed the kitchen where I can literally sit in my recliner, okay, uh -huh. kick it back. And I can see my stove because we moved our island this way, which made it not centered, but mm -hmm. I only have cam lights. And the builder's like, you know, we want to center this. No, no, bro. I got to sit there and I can see it. I have to leave the stove light on in my sink light, but I can literally see it as well as hear the weighted gauge go back and forth. 
Hey, um, Michelle. Hey, JJ. JJ's my boyfriend. All of y'all back off. I'm just saying out loud. Okay. I'm not, I'm not saying why, but anyway. Okay. <laughs> Just mouse has not seen my husband's butt. But anyway. Yeah, yeah. Okay, JJ's got it going on. Michelle scored. Yep, yep. Okay. So anyway, I, my man tall. So Jesse's having a link here to altitude. So you want to make sure you know your altitude. And it's easy as going to Google and putting in, I guess, just searching altitude. Yeah. And how many feet up you are from sea level. Put your city there. It's in the front of every book, every single freaking book. And it's like, wow. Yeah. And it doesn't change. If you haven't relocated, it's going to be the same as it was before. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so just don't make it harder than it is. And I love what four jars did. They gave us that cheat sheet. Let me get it. All right. Question the other day I heard a YouTuber say she was canning her leftovers. You're saying I can only pressure can recipes from the blue book. The one thing, remember this? That I they can't. give us? Oh, yeah. I ain't lifted it up there yet. Is that I, not the coolest thing on the planet? Mm -hmm. Yep. That's sort of like my note to the 10th degree, right? Mm -hmm. Just taking it a step further. So, you know, you're going to wash your jars, lids, and bands in hot water. You're going to check your head space, space, removing the bubbles with your pokey joe. Mm -hmm. You're going to wipe your jar rims, right? And then you're going to cool and leave your jars unmolested for 24 hours in their resting place. Away but from your husband. Exactly. Yes. Away, and away from a door. Yes. And But this can save you as a new canner, just keeping it right up there when you're doing it. Or you can make a copy of it and check everything off. So we have a question. Oh, God. The lady said her YouTube friend or somebody on YouTube was canning her leftovers. She's saying, I only pressure can. You're saying, I only can pressure a recipe from the blue book. So canning your leftovers. Yeah. I, I want to do it. But you know what? Let's say it's beef stew. Right? So beef stew tends to be thick. I make a thick broth or gravy up in there, or meat gravy, as they say up in Jersey and Boston. Okay. And Kelly, yes, I'll get to you in a minute because that you are so bad. So wrong for that. I'm just saying out loud. Okay. So if I have beef stew, something I always, always have, this is chicken broth. Okay. But I always have. I can't sleep if I don't have 50 turkey or chicken stock and 50 beef broth hanging around, okay? So what I'm going to do with that beef stew, now I'm only going to have carrots in it, onions, right? Of course, beef, some type of beef, is I'm going to make that a 50-50 ratio in this jar. Okay? Of solid liquids. Yeah, so let's say that I take some of the beef, the carrots, the onion, I'm going to put it to here. Then I'm going to add my beef stock to the rest of it. Now, do you think that's basically, Leanne, a 50-50 solids to liquid? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I open that, it's not going to have that thick, beautiful gravy I want. I'm going to have to boil it on the stove. And that meat is going to get tougher because I already cooked it. But if you're an ingredient canner, you could take a jar, preferably with a good four jars lid on it that you haven't stuck a metal utensil in 500 times and etch the inside of it, okay? You could take your beef chunks. They could be steak tips, cheap stew meat at the grocery, right? Your own animal, a thing of carrots, a thing of potatoes, add some fresh onions, and add all these to make a beef stew. So the meat will be tougher, but if you combine it 50% solid and then the rest liquid, then you can do it. But she's absolutely right that you cannot truly can your leftover. Now, what if you put asparagus or something in it? I put green beans in mine. Mm -hmm. that, that's gonna become mush, you know, and so I think make it not appetizing, sorry. 
So canning leftovers, that's just basically making your own recipe up. And it's a bad thing because there's a lot of variables. You could be adding dairy, which you can't can. You could be canning, adding your oils in there or cauliflower or broccoli. I'm just saying that there's so many variables to just putting in stuff into a jar that it's not right just to put it. Like I saw somebody on YouTube try to can her leftover mashed potatoes and then proceeded to put it in an electric pressure canner. Yeah. But just think about if they're doing something like beef stew or spaghetti, they can if they think. And if nothing else, Go to one of these books. Let's say you're doing beef stew. Go to this book and say, okay, what do I do meat at, right? And then you go to your, one of your old trustees. Now, this is outdated, okay, because it's over 10 years old, but everything in here is trusted. So let's say that you're going to do beef stew or you're going to do spaghetti sauce. If you have that proportion of ingredients of celery, onion, the beef, the tomato sauce, you know that it's basically a safe recipe, okay? Mm -hmm. But you're still going to have to get a 50% solid to liquid. And so, yeah, I'm with you on leftovers. I prefer to freeze them, right? But if mm -hmm. I'm going to do that, then I'm going to have to make sure just what Leanne said, there aren't any taters in it, right? Okay, there's not any butter. There's not an exceptional large amount of oil you know what i mean or flour yes and then okay let's get to kelly s wait a minute i have to scroll backwards oh. where to go okay kelly s done lost her mind i got it right here is this the one you mean it hadn't come up for me yet i have it on the screen i think okay is that the one you mean? Oh, yes, that's the one. Okay, I like the weighted hula jiggler because it makes me stop stressing out and staring at the dial for the whole time. So she's using the weighted gauge, the jiggler that does the hula. So three times she said the same thing. Kelly, yes, you did that on purpose. She did that to torture me. You know she did. The weighted hula jiggler. <laughs> I love it. Oh, Kelly, yes, you're wrong for that. Yeah. Then we have, so why is mashed potatoes wrong? Okay. There's a very long, it's a short word. It's not even hard to spell called density. Mm -hmm. And then if you go to your book and say, wow, how do I process potatoes? Do I do it in a water bath or a pressure canner? And what is going to happen to that? What is that going to become when you can it? I don't know, but it's going to look like milk and be nasty. So you've I, got density issues. I accidentally put mashed potatoes in my Instapot to warm them up. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it was runny. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. It's, it looks like mucus is what it, it almost looks like mucus with little grits in it. And I can't stand grits. Grits disgust me. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. You know, Kelly, yes, what you did. You stop it. Oh, my God. Hey, Hillbilly. Okay, she, finally, hill. she finally got here. <laughs> yes. I was like, where is the Hillbilly? She's probably out there picking tomatoes. So, but yeah. And what, it, what would be when you can can your own potatoes, okay, in a jar? Um, that's what I do with a can of a jar, a can or canning of potatoes is take them out, get them hot, add some butter, a little bit of milk. And now I got myself mashed potatoes. So, and you can get those envelopes that are very good now, you know, garlic flavored, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Take up very little time in your pantry. And that's how I look at canning. Uh, I'm not just going to can something because, you know, I got empty jars. There are things I prefer to put in the freezer and there's other things I prefer canned and other things that I can dehydrate. So, but I, I also like meals in a jar. I think of my shells as real estate. What I put yes. in those jars is going to, it's going to sit there for a while. So I got to make sure I'm going to eat it or my husband. Or right. it's not going to be canned. Yes. That's like, why I put like, 
Lazy Day says, that's what my wife calls me. I'm her weighted hell of a jiggler. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these people ain't right in your side chat. I'm just saying. That's because that's why I love them, you know. Yes, butter is better. Right on, Dink and Tank. If it can take butter, it's getting butter at my house. Yep, and Chris B. had a friend water bath chicken rice vegetable soup for three hours. You sent her a message to look at the ball book. She told me she watched folks on Facebook. I think I'll mind my business. And that's what um, Lee and I were talking about before we came on. Yeah, I was it, like, oh, I have to hit the record button. Yeah, if you go to TikTok or Rebel Cannon groups, you, you will be terrified. But if you tell them, they will say things to you like, you know, my great mama and me ma and papa, they done did that up in the Smoky Mountains, right? No grits, Ginger. I don't even like to type it out. Okay. And then, I mean, I grew up when you took the jar and you turned it upside down on the concrete oh. in the heat of New Orleans to seal your jar because it literally had a rubber gasket, right? So times have changed. But there are still people who swear they do not get sick, say, water bath and green beans, but they put a tablespoon of vinegar in it. I think they'd be lying, okay? Or maybe we never see them again. But if you tell people you become the enemy and you're an ugly word canner, you know what I mean? A very ugly word. So I just let them hurt themselves Okay, but if I'm subscribed to them, I unsubscribe. And it, it just scares me. It's during 2020, the word we could not say for all those years on YouTube. Now they say we can say it, but I still can't. I say so. I, Yeah, we went through 165 jars of our home canned food, dehydrated, stuff in our freezer, so we didn't have to go to the grocery for six weeks. What would be the point of turning this into a beautiful pot pie, okay, if it's going to make us sick? And I am constantly seeing people today saying, the old way of canning was, even when you turned it upside down on your hot concrete to push that rubber gasket, that then the further safety was to boil the ingredients for 10 minutes. And because Leanne is smarter than me, she knows the temperature that boiling rises to. <laughs> yeah, and it ain't killing no botulism, and botulism ain't got no smell, it ain't got no taste. So imagine in the middle of 2020, we were 64, 45 minutes from a hospital, that we get food poisoning. And if we could have got an ambulance to come out here, we would then be going to the hospital alone. I, I swear I always want to get myself a home canner bracelet. Mm -hmm. but I like to wear bracelets because the last thing they're going to look at is botulism. And remember in 2020, really for a year, you couldn't go to the hospital with your loved one to tell anybody anything. So if, if it's on my, my, in my pantry, I have to know it's safe to eat. I've been doing time 43 years married to this man. I ain't taking him out to save a dollar on some carrots or some chicken that I just didn't feel like processing long enough or I didn't save myself my cheat sheet and I messed up. So just imagine in those times and, you know, they throw you on a ventilator first thing. So, but, so we got uh, a very good point here. You can boil Boil it for a week and it'll still won't reach that temperature needed. Thank you. That, that couldn't have been Kelly S. who said that. No, bandana grandma. Okay. I hope I I, I hope I pronounced that right. But yeah, that is an excellent point. You can yeah, bandana grandma. Yep. Yes. You can boil water for five, six, ten days and yes. it'll still not reach that 265 degree. Unless, yep. unless you're in the center of the earth, maybe. I don't right. Know. There you go. Near the magma, right? Yeah. That is, is a very good point. And the reason I can is to inflation proof my pantry in 2020, mm -hmm. right? When if you could find chicken in the store, it doubled in price. Is yeah, not double, triple. 
Yeah, everything we're eating, I'll give you an example. Okay, here's 2018. Okay, these happen to be, what the hell are these? Black-eyed peas. Okay, now peas were never expensive, right? But this chicken thighs that I canned in 2023, chicken thighs, no bone, that was gotten before now. It's probably been in my freezer three years and ended up taking out a bunch and making a bunch of cannon runs. Mm -hmm. But we could not afford the food that was out. And the only thing they had in our area was pork butt. I have a buttload of pork butt mm -hmm. canned in pie jars because I'll just decide I need a pork butt sandwich, right? And I always got coleslaw. I can make coleslaw. And then there was a meal. So everything we're eating was stuff before these inflated prices. So what are we saving if we make ourselves sick with bad food? I, I just don't get it. Because that stays being, you know, treated for whatever element we have. The restaurant, yes. the, the medical bills for the doctor to treat us. Time off of work. That's not pleasant. Yes. Yeah. Just because like we want to save a dollar. Exactly. And instead, it's bad. I like what Hillbilly said. She saw a person can taters on YouTube, she dropped a cannon ring on the floor, picked it up, wiped it on her apron, and put it on the jar twice. Okay. So she doesn't watch her anymore. I start out with my kitchen island sanitized because when I drop a chunk of chicken or a piece of pork butt, okay, or uh, you know, a couple carrots, I'm picking them up and put them back in my jar. But they fell on my island not to flow. Not the flow. And I also don't go sticking my fingers all up in my jar. So when I store my jars, right, I got the ring on it. Okay. It's upside down on my wooden pantry shelves. When I go to get this jar, okay, now mind you, I've got everything ready. It might be a hot pack, might be a cold pack. I don't go pick this jar up like this. My fingers is in the jar. Where mm -hmm. last was my fingers? Odds are they were on my pokey joke. Okay, so I keep my fingers out of my jar because your fingers always aren't the cleanest. We're doing our best, right? I might put on gloves when I'm canning pork or something, but I still mm -hmm. don't stick my fingers in my jar. Oh, and Hillbilly, I know you're going to go here because this is what Hillbilly does. Again, talking about the proper names for things. This would be a jar. This would be a ring or a band. And then, well, you hush it. Okay. Sorry. And then Go we on. got our lid with Hillbilly insist on calling it a flat. So when I get these weird email questions about their flats and their bands and their hula dancing crackhead things, it makes ciphering out what they're trying to ask me very hard. It's very hard. There she goes. She's calling them flats. You see, it's what she does. She's my nemesis. Oh, God. Yes, and Pokey Joe is a technical term, ma'am. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. When I was young, I was in charge of debubbling. And the way that my dad made it to where I remember when I'd say, okay, it's ready for the rubber, okay, because it was a rubber, you know, like the new Harvest Guard reusable things, he would say, did you debubble? And I would say, what is that? He'd say, did you pokey Joe? So you put it in there and you pokey Joe it around and you get the air out. So that's why it will always be a pokey Joe to me, because if you don't pokey Joe, it's no good. You know, you too, Hillbilly, I adore you. This is an interesting comment. Okay. She's saying that she took a class at the extension office a month ago and they were saying not to use used jars from a yard sale because they might contain botulism. Not botulism, but some people use them, I swear, turpentine. I have said this a long time. I ain't saying nothing new. I've been out here a hundred years. This is a holy vessel for me. It ain't a pencil cup. It don't hold paint. Okay. Paint brushes. It doesn't hold paint. So, but a lot of people use kerosene, right? Run it outside, put a little oil in it, run it outside. I know somebody's husband who's in the side chat, 
like use some cast iron to change their oil. Believe me. So I understand what they're saying, but to me, you can smell the jar, right? And you can generally tell with a black light, I have one on a key ring. If somebody stuck, um, say, a butter knife or a fork in it to dig stuff out of it if it's etched inside. So I dig what they're saying because anything could have been in that jar. Well, really she's did. saying it came from the University of Kentucky. Well, okay, now them people up in the mountains, but I don't know how glass, right, is going to harbor. Maybe we're not re reading the question right, I, or the statement right. Ma'am, I can read. No, oh, it was no. modulus. <laughs> you can't. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. I ain't <laughs> slow. <laughs> Maybe she's missing some information in her statement. That's all okay. I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Hey, we got Carrie <laughs> in the house. Hi, Carrie. Right. Oh, God. Syrup. I love this. Hillbilly, the thing I say to my husband more than I love you is get out of my kitchen. Yes, sister. She's saying, that, she's saying that botulism can grow, can live on glass. Okay. Well, I don't know if you remember this, but in 2020, they said the virus could stick to glass for nine days. Oh, okay, have they figured yeah. out nine days? But that I find that hard to believe because I know people who have gotten botulism. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And the jar is fine. This is what does bother me when I watch people on YouTube. They say, you know, when you open your jar, okay, let's say you, you've got full food in it. You open it, smell it. You can't Don't smell do that because if it's got botulism in it, it's going to go right up your nose. Right. And you can't smell. It doesn't have a smell or a taste or anything. We all get scared of our own tomato juice every once in a while. When our lid, you know, the underside will look like it has black mold on it. Remember how everybody will go, oh, should I eat this? You know, under the, the white side of your lid. So, but yeah, I, I, I have a problem with that. I'm just thinking turpentine. But if that's true, we should all throw our, all our jars away. You know, that don't mm -hmm. make no sense. But they're from Kentucky, so. I am talking about the handsome Joe Man Ginger. <laughs> <laughs> Ginger has a rooster crow and she's got to run. Oh, his birthday's tomorrow. Fight off the bear. Oh my God. But I just don't think, I just want to trust anything I have in my pantry. And one of my favorite things about this new book was they came out with some meals in a jar. Mm -hmm. And all of them that, that I have tried have been fantastic. Every single one of them. And they're small batches. Because this is um, curry chicken. And I wrote on the top, at open flour. Add flour to make the gravy mm -hmm. thick. These would have been perfect when Bird was always traveling. Instead, I'd swing myself into McDonald's or a cafeteria and spend too much money on food. Mm -hmm. And I would love to just open this, get it hot, add some flour, pour it over some rice. So I do like that they kind of got with the program that people need something more convenient. And the fact that it's from the ball book, I know these are safe canned. And I never can with spices as I find they get exaggerated in the canning process. But theirs have not. Like I watch some canners and I think, good Lord, what is that going to taste like when they open it? And they'll swear it's delicious. But I'm thinking, I think their tongue died five years ago, you know, from all the spices. Because it changes the flavor mm -hmm. um, inside the jar. That's why I try to can with ingredients and not meals, more or less. Yes. Just because some days I'm not going to feel like, you know, the same flavors that I did last week, you know? Yes. Yep. Okay, Hillbilly's going out of state. She's going to bring home as many used jars as she can pack in the truck, along with mom's sewing machines. I have never been afraid of a glass jar and I've gotten plenty at yard sales. And I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Nothing's wrong with me. So I, I'm just, I'm not afraid of that. Now, I sure ain't using a lid two times, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I think that's, um, 
you know, people call us bad names with safe cannon, but geez, that's going too far. I mean, should we buy used that's knives? Even use let's yeah. Talk. Where has the knives been when I buy them in the store and clean them? I mean, are they dangerous too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So bandana grandma is saying, did you know it's safe to can pork, but not processed meat like ham and sausage? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now I've and made my own sausage patties, right? Mm -hmm. To can. But I don't cured meat ahead. has not been tested safe. Exactly. Yep. That's why. Oh, yeah, Hillbilly, that'd be very hard going through this stuff. is very, very hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, and that's a good point, Kelly. Yes, you just redeemed yourself, you jiggle hula, hula girl. It's not going to grow unless it has something to consume. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, so that's that. That's a bridge too far for me. You know? Is that a question? Do you know why? I Did we answer it? Yeah, it's because it's not been tested. Yes. Well... And it's, it's processed, right? Like we can do our own sausage patties, mm -hmm. right? But it's not, it's not priced like smoked. You know, when people go, I use smoked meat. Well, it's going to, that smoke taste is not going to be in there if it were safe to can. What's the risk worth it? Do y'all people not have freezers? That's what I'm going to ask people. Do you not have a freezer? Like I, ham is, I don't like corn canned. Okay. I'm not like getting me a bunt pan and, hacking off a bunch of fresh corn and canning it, right? Mm -hmm. That's why God's got Libby, okay? I like that Libby corn, that green giant sweet kernel corn. I mean, there's just some things I still buy in a commercial can. Cured meat's too dense. Yep, sausage is okay if it's loose, not links. Like weenies, remember? Like I used to can weenies, but it can't be cured weenies. Mm -hmm. And people think, oh, I'll shove any weenie in a jar. It's hideous. It looks like a zombie. I call it zombie weenie, zombie chicken when you can it with the bow. It looks just like a science experiment. Okay, see, Miss Gillum Farms doesn't like canned corn. It's just dumb. The first month I was married, my husband planted two acres of sweet corn, or was it 10? I just what? know I canned 100 quarts of corn my first year, first month, first year, first month. Wow. In there. Do you know how much of it's still down there? All of it? No, but <laughs> maybe 75%, maybe 50. Oh, my God. Okay, yeah. yeah. And it's like, it's corn. I mean, when you go to the Dollar Tree and you get that Libby or Green Giant corn, it's like a 10 cents. You know what I mean? Yeah, it makes me crazy. Sorry, my table of three. <laughs> you don't like canned corn either. Think about it. It's a holy vessel. What is more... What is better in this? Carrots, potatoes, chicken, pork, right? I can put things together, make myself a stew, right? Then putting corn in it. And heck, I did weenies in quart jars. They looked hideous. I was like, for God's sake, I can stack those up in my chest freezer. So I think you get to where you look just what you said. You look at the real estate. Do I want it in my pantry? Do I want it in my freezer? Right. But at first, yeah, I understand. My God, I cannot believe you can that much corn. Me you either. But I got used to learning how to use a pressure can really quick. Well, at first we can everything, don't we? It's like a sickness. It's like and I see people at the grocery and go, could I dehydrate that? And I said, yes, you could. You could can it. But will you like it? Have you tried it? I don't like dehydrated um, celery. I don't like celery in a jar. So I freeze my chopped celery. So I just open a couple of sachets of it and I got myself enough for tater salad or whatever, but I don't like it dehydrated and I don't like it canned, but we have to try them. Right. But we don't have to, you know, do 40 of them. Right. If we've never tried it for it's why I like this ball book. You just do a four pints, right. When you're doing their meals and mm -hmm. then you see if you like them. And if you do, then you might want to make two can or runs and, pint jars or quart jars if it says you could do them. Is this a question? Oh, God. Because Hillbilly told me to respond to this. Weasel. Okay. Weasel B. Okay. Scrolling, scrolling, trying to read. With I, try, I trust tried and true methods coming from folks who have been water bath and everything for decades, centuries, and survived. Then listen to the government who is continually misled and lied to us for years. 
Whistleby, you go get you some botulism, some bacteria, some diarrhea for six weeks if you want to. But trusting the government has nothing to do with trusting what's canned in your pantry. Now, if you want a water bath, green beans for three hours, put two tablespoons of vinegar, you knock yourself out. But I hope you never make a video on it because when somebody does it and makes himself sick, they will sue the pure D bleep out of you because you're showing something unsafe. And food has changed. Meats have changed. Antibiotics, hormones, all those things have changed. And that's the reason the methods to can are. But also remember back in the day when you had nine kids, your whole family lived all around that holler and you were canning green beans with vinegar, they were eating all that stuff real fast. I literally have a tomato sauce from 2017 in my pantry. I do it to show people that that lid is still on there. It is still a vibrant color. But if you do that with some of those old pants, old timey things, you will be sick. And not only will you be sick, you will deserve it because that's how we get stuck off of stupid. Okay, like your mama said, don't run through the house with scissors. If you keep running with that stick, you're going to poke your eye out. The next thing you know, you know, you're in the playground with your eyeball on a stick. That's what happens. So this ain't got nothing to do with the government because I wouldn't spit on the president if he were on fire. So I feel you there. But anyway, I feel better. I'd like to apologize for my rant, Leanne, but you have met me before. Uh, this time, I think we both have posted this on our community tab. The ladies, um, I think it was the Co Colorado Extension Not Service, posted a video on how this lady gave a testimony of how she really screwed up canning green beans and yes. got botulism. Yes. If you have not watched that video, that will make you understand why it is important to um, can safely. Yep. See, and Janet does not know who MT is. MT, well, that would be me. That is mouse toes. Also known as loudmouth Lyme. And right, nobody has to wonder how I'm feeling because I will tell you. But it, this is in our pantry to feed our family. I'm trying to save a dollar, not make a statement and go, you know what? I'm going to get, I'm going to get wild with my green beans. I'm going to can me some caramelized onion and I'm going to show the government what's happening. That's just dumb. Well, Dark Lord Mammoth just, just flat out called me out and said, yeah, you're better at ranting than I am. Okay, Dark Lord Minute is my arch nemesis. I don't know if you know that, Leanne. Okay, we just banter all the time. The bottom line is the name of Leanne's channel is Midnight Farmhouse. She is a nicer person. She's younger. I'm old. I don't give two fat figs, and I have no tolerance for stupid. I have absolutely none. And if I made someone sick with my advice on canning, Okay, God would not be amused with me. This is some serious business. And mm -hmm. there are people with families out here who you can hurt. So hair flip for myself. Leanne will never have me on her panel again. But that's what happens. Whatever. <laughs> I'd rather somebody speak the truth. Because sometimes I just don't know what to say. Yeah, it's you like just said it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love Dark Lord. You will learn the way soon. <laughs> Listen, I'm from Louisiana, Kinster Crafts, okay? You don't get no more redneck than me, okay? So nobody's making fun of people from Kentucky, okay? <laughs> I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. Oh, good Lord. Yeah. So I don't know. Either be safe or be stupid. It's up to you. I'm trying to inflation-proof my pantry, not get sick. I didn't live to be this old being stupid, you know? Thank you, Hillbilly. Thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, do you, if you want to do it, do it. But I'm just begging you, don't make a video on it. Because when you make hundreds of people sick, they're going to come for you. And I don't know if you know what, but lawyers will go pro, pro bono on you to go after YouTube and Canon. Mm -hmm. I ain't going out like a pump. Not going to do it. 
There you go. See Marie Petrillo, right? She runs a darn jar through the dishwasher. And I swear if a jar has had kerosene or gasoline in it, if you smell it, you will smell it. That's kind of forever. I don't know mm -hmm. why, but it's weird. It could be the ring that they've got still on it, you know? Okay, now see this Kelly S nailed it. Now see Kelly S has redeemed herself. Now I adore Kelly S. Okay. So the trick is learning how to tell someone exactly what you think without being obviously offensive. Yeah, I'm not good at that. Obviously, without being obviously offensive is where I fail, Kelly S. But Leanne, I believe, could do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, she could do so. I just Every, aren't we all grown? Everybody's looking to get offended by something. You know what I mean? But when it comes to food, hang on one second. Burns kind of bother me. Husband interrupt us. Wait, I have to mute this. Okay. So. I'm just reading comments. Sorry. Okay, Leanne, Vern nailed it. And this would be a nicer way to do it. Say it again. I forgot what the hell you just said. Okay. You say, if I were to agree with you, then we would both be wrong. If I were to agree with you, then we would both be wrong. See, I married a nice person. He didn't. You know? Yeah. Thank you, Vern. Look, mm -hmm. husband interrupt us where it was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. We're going to pause Vern there. Yeah. I'm careful where I get my candy jars from. And I don't buy the. The manufacturer single use jars anymore. Right. Because they this might is, they might break. Yep. Yeah. This this is why I like four jars. Remember, I was mad when ball went to, oh, you don't have to boil your um lid or your flat, as Hillbilly calls it anymore, because I still do. And the four jars, you can still do that. I was mad when we had all been loyal to ball. Right, anchor and careful. Remember, we tried the pure lids, everything. During 2020, when you cannot tell me they don't have a warehouse full of ball lids. But would they release them? No. And when they did release them to our little Ace stores and grocery stores, they were almost double in price. So while we had been loyal and used their product and promoted their product, they took that opportunity to stick it to us. Whereas four jars came out, kept it real, kept it authentic, and made it available to us. And they still are so kind in canning collaborations to provide their product to us to use. And I still have not had one single four jar lid fail. But I follow the right? The rules on how to do it. I wipe my ring, my uh, head space is correct, that sort of thing. But, um, so. Linda just showed up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Dark Lord Minute. The only thing I get offended is when someone goes after my spelling and grammar, everything else I just laugh at, especially in a side chat, Dark Lord, where some of us are typing on our cell phone with two gorilla thumbs or you hit send and it auto corrects it. And um, you know, we're busy. It's like we can read typo knee typo knees. So. Oh, all right. It is. We have been at this an hour, ma'am. Yes. So we. Have you talked about the new electric canners and they to follow the guidelines? They are being tested. They're being tested in Oregon, as far as I know. But I won't use them until they say Oregon would say they're safe. I'm not even sure if I would because I'm too cheap. I don't need another appliance in my pantry. Crab, you know, big crab pots to boil crabs in and seafood. I ain't got no more room. And I ain't got nobody to leave that to when I die. And I'm 66. So, you know, life in prison doesn't mean a lot to me. So, and Willow's Garden is in the side chat. And it, Willow's Garden found Orchard Road canning lids when all of our ball lids were failing like crazy. 
she found it. And I went on panel um, at Lisa's when Mike from Four Jars was there. And mm -hmm. I told him, I know that these are Orchard Road cannon lids. And he somehow got the recipe because there is good. But it's Willow's Garden who found Orchard Road cannon lids for us. And here's mine. And just to show you Willow's Garden, look how long, 2017, this Orchard Road lid is still on my black eyed peas. Isn't that wild? But I'm telling you, the four jars lid is exactly that same good quality. The compound is, you know, very good. So, but yeah, I, I'm not, somebody, they will test that. But how many jars does it hold also? I mean, I've got a two level presto right that i can mm -hmm. use and then the regular presto okay that i could do my eight pints in i don't i don't really do small runs if that makes sense if i'm gonna crank up the canner i'm gonna be inside mm -hmm. so yeah i usually keep my lives to an hour so i hope we've answered a lot of your questions and got people some answers to important questions. And I want to thank Mouse Toast for being here because she doesn't have to be here. <laughs> I enjoy it. Well, Vernon <laughs> dropped our blue crab pots for us because I was like, oh no, the tide's wrong. LP has a good question. If you have a jar of pickled beets and the lid is sealed, but the button is popped, what would you do with the contents? Now, I don't have many buttons, but I can tell you, let me get it on StreamYard so I can see. If this lid, okay, is not coming off of here, what I've got in this is safely canned. But that's only because I know I processed this turkey stock for the right amount of time. I had the right head space. I did the processing and venting as I should have. But the, but the button, if it's up and not down, that's when you throw it out. But was it down when they, because I've had ones with a button that the button does not go down. I don't like the button ones. Then it didn't process right. Okay. If the yeah. button's up, then they're not, pro they're not properly sealed. Oh, hey, Sherry. She used to be an inspector for ball grice, ball glass. Human error did go out the door, always inspect for hairline cracks. Yep. Very good. You ever remember we've seen bubbles in the side of some mm -hmm. inside the glass? We're quite a balanced team. Well, thank yep. you. Yep. So yeah, it would mean still got air in there, but yeah, that is very that stinks. But only thing I know is if my lid is on here, but if I could not trust that I processed it right, you ever had one come out of the canner that goes floop, 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 floop. Yes. Yeah, sent me a video when it was closing and then it sealed. And I was like, no, get rid of that. Cause that's just weird. Do you know, we can make anything seal, right? We, it doesn't mean what's in it safe. It just means, cause I know what I did in this one to process. Yeah. It was safe and it's just cause it's sealed. But if I processed it wrong or didn't put lemon juice in my tomatoes, then it wouldn't be. I think stocks are, a good example of when the seal keeps going up and down until it does finally seal. Yeah. Yes. Cause it's so liquidy and thin, but boy, is there anything better than your own stock? No. Yeah. Nothing's better. Right. So if, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I, and it sounds like I interrupt, but most people know I'm on DSL. So mine is slower, but I wouldn't interrupt Leanne for nothing. It just sounds like it. too. So, so if your button in the middle is up after 24 hours, you throw, you throw the food away. And if you don't follow the recipe correctly and you question the fact that if you did something right or wrong, well, if you question if you did it wrong, then you might have a case of food poisoning. So yeah. that's when you throw the whole jar away if there's a potential for botulism. I learned that the other week. But I'm like, oh. Interesting. I just checked all mine. I don't have buttons. I'm button free. What kind of things have a button on them? I've seen them. On or darn, you have buttons in the middle. Do they? Yeah, I don't have a button. I'm button free. See, Maybe a different time. Like this part right here in the middle? 
That's considered a button. Let me see. I don't got a new button. That is so weird. I did not ever hear about a button. I remember there were some that used to have a button. Remember, it was right, just like it looked like a belly button. Mm -hmm. you know, it was a quarter inch circle. That was weird. How so, do you feel about the electric? Go ahead. So if food is in your jars for 24 hours and the button hasn't gone down yet and it's something you can't or can reprocess, you need to reheat it, heat up that food again, then put it in the jar and put a fresh new lid on, then process it again for the same amount of time if mm -hmm. you want to can it. But if it's something like green beans, it's just better to throw them in the freezer. This what I always do, like if it's my last canner run, I always like they're sitting out on your table, is before I go to bed, I always push it, okay? And then if it were to go flap it, flap it, like many of the ball jars did, I'd then stick it in the refrigerator before I went to bed. But yeah, I remember watching somebody's go floop, 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 floop on a video, and I had never had that happen, so... But siphon it happens. Yeah, real life happens. When in doubt, throw it out for sure. Hey, so Mountain for, Grandma. So for my, from what I've been told, if you have a case where you can the food and you didn't follow the exact instructions and there is a chance of bosulum, you're actually mm -hmm. supposed to throw the jar away with the food. But mm -hmm. if it's just something that's spoiled in the jar, I would keep the jar. And, I want to process it right. Yeah, as long as you process it right. And that's why it's why we go through the Bible and the ball book for the instructions to properly can it. Dark Lord makes a good point. Um, we run our jars through the dishwasher. Vern empties the dishwasher. So when we take the jar out, he feels the inside. He always feels around the edge, right, before he puts a ring on it, and then stores it upside down on our wooden shelves. But if I didn't inspect that jar every time, right, I could not be sure it didn't get chipped. You know, when you're slamming around in that dishwasher, sometimes you, you know, chip your jar. So that's very good. But I never stick a metal knife in there. You can stick a chopstick in it, a skewer, a pokey joe, you know, it comes with the cannon kit. And would not would not the food be bad for 24 hours if it was sealed sitting on out at room temperature? I would throw it away, I would think. Would it be bad after 24 hours? Yeah, it could still seal, but if you didn't process it the right amount of time, it's not safe what's in the jar. That's why I think four jars came out with this, right? To give us a step-by-step -step for all the new canners who've come out since 2020. And they just want to throw food in a jar, whether they call it dry canning, which is not even a thing in the oven, all the craziness is gone on. But I love it. It comes every time you get a pack of lids. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah, just be safe. I mean, you want to make your family sick or you're trying to save a dollar or in my case, we're trying to, you know, store what we grew and harvested or what we get at the, um, Farmer's market, that's what surprised me in 2020. I've always thought, you know, if you have a bad season in your garden, you can always go to the farmer's market. Remember how long they wouldn't let us go to a farmer's market? Almost a year. You know, where you could go buy yourself, you know, 50 pounds of tomatoes to make your sauce or whatever. So that, that was really surprising. Cutting us off from a food source to home store. If you're a food storage enthusiast, you're looked upon poorly. Like, I'm sorry, but you do what you got to do, but I'm going to have food for my family. I didn't get this old being stupid and I'm hungry and I don't want to mm -hmm. just beans and rice, beans and rice, right? We put a lot of effort into canning. Canning ain't hard. It's trying to can and make a video that's hard. Leanne, I talked about that too. You lose two clips of your video, you can't even use it. So, but canon is not hard. Videoing your canon session is a pain in the patookas. Mm hmm. And you got to be happy all at the same time. Yep. <clears throat> yep. 
I've never had something inside my jar or something smell bad in my jar and even considered throwing out my jar. It's glass. If it was plastic, it'd be different, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, I got to go check my crap box. Oh, yeah. I go put my pig clothes back on and paddle out there and see what's out in there. It is well, hot, people. It's hot. Well, have fun crabbing. And I'm going to go yes. have some fun canning my horticulture beans. Yes. You going to make a video or the next time you do them? The next time I harvest because I still got some green ones on the vine here. So Okay. That's exciting. I, I did a lot of research today just to make sure I'm canning these safe. Apparently, you can can just like luna beans. Who knew? Mm -hmm. It was like, remember how everybody was like, oh, can you can black-eyed peas? Yes, yes, you can. And they're fabulous. Yep, it's very weird. But yeah, I'm I'm curious if they'll lose that cranberry color, like tricolored carrots do when you can them. They lose that beautiful, vibrant color. But they're well, still going to be delicious. Working, um, purple hull beans, they turn brown too. Okay. So it's so depressing. They're so pretty. They're white and pink and purple and Ooh. fuchsia and yeah. Nice. But I'd rather be safe. Oh, yucky. Molly Smith tried faba beans. God, I loved those when I was in Spain. Dear God. Yeah, sometimes stuff gets too smushy. You know? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. And all your weird, weird side chatters. Well, thank you, everybody. Jiggler. Thanks. For what did we learn? Jiggler, hula dancer. God, yeah. they just make this <laughs> something. The crazy. hula dance. All right. Take care, folks. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>